Dear students, uh, the first topic would be related to the seminar of the sixth week, uh, the reflexes and the pathways of the spinal cord. We will see how many pathways can be described first. First I want to describe the ascending, then the descending pathways. But uh, the very first topic would be the reflexes. We have five components in each reflex. We have a receptor which is able to detect the specific stimulus. We have afferent or sensory branch which leads to the uh, center. The third is the center itself and the fourth one is the efferent or motor part or branch and uh, the fifth is its termination which is called effector. Uh, we have two major reflexes what we teach. One is the proprioceptive reflex which is related uh, to the anti-gravitation muscles or that's why it's also called anti-gravitational reflex and this uh, uh, provides uh, the body posture against the gravity and uh, we have a nociceptive reflex uh, or uh, withdrawal reflex and I want to compare these two uh, but like, let's start with the proprioceptive reflex uh, the proprioceptive reflex, also called monosynaptic reflex, because here we have only one junction between the uh, participants, between the elements in the reflex. And uh, according to the different muscles, uh, we have distinct names uh, which are used in uh, the neurological practice. Okay, so this is a schematic uh, drawing about the uh, horizontal cut of the spinal cord. Uh, I didn't show the lateral horn because it's not important uh, to us now. Uh, we have a, a skeletal muscle with extra easel fibers and we have another one which is inserted between these. This would be the intra fusel fiber and uh, the intra fusel fiber it has a certain thickening where we have accumulation of the nuclei. This is from where the uh, sensory fiber starts, like this. Just see the inner nerve cell and the central process enters here. So. The receptor of the monosynaptic reflex or proprioceptive reflex is found on the intrafusal fiber as a muscle spindle. We have two options. When we have a little thickening in the middle of the uh, intrafusal fiber, this is called a nuclear bag because of the accumulation of the nuclei. And in this case, this green fiber is the thickest. Uh, this is 1A type. And the very first part is called annulospiral uh, nerve ending, and this is the fastest conduction. Uh, we have another option when we have uh, just a chain of the nuclei called nuclear chain receptor. This is also part of the muscle spindle option. In this case, the uh, sensory fiber is thinner. This is type 2 uh, fiber. 1A, the so called nuclear back related receptor is uh, sensitive to the uh, speed of the stretch. Type 2, which comes from the so-called flower spray, is sensitive to the degree of the stretch. But both uh, are represented in my drawing together. So the receptor again is muscle spindle. The uh, sensory or afferent fiber uh, would be among the thickest 1A or type 2. The cell bodies of the uh, fibers located in the dorsal root ganglion and the central process enters the, the CNS where it terminates directly on the large motor neurons. <coughs> Multiple nerve cells and uh, this runs to the target tissue. This is again the thickest uh, nerve fiber, one, I mean A alpha and it terminates on the extrafusal fiber with effectors. The effector was mentioned previously in the histo seminars and this is called neuromuscular junction or motor end plate. 
So if I want to summarize it again, <coughs> the receptor is muscle spindle, the sensory branch is the, among the thickest uh, fibers, the cell bedded, which are located in dorsal root ganglion. The center is monosynaptic, and uh, we have a direct connection between the central uh, process and the large motor neurons in the ventral horn of the spinal cord. The efferent part is A alpha, again the thickest, very fast, and the effector would be uh, in the same muscle, but only on the extrafusal fiber. This is the neuromuscular junction <coughs> or end motor end plate. <coughs> uh, this is the reflex itself, <coughs> but simultaneously we have to do something else, namely we have to antagonize the antagonist uh, uh, group. So how does the nervous system is able to do this? How is the nervous system able to do this? The incoming uh, center process uh, gives collateral which can descend or ascend a few segments. So let me show you another spinal cord segment. insert an inhibitory uh, neuron which is located let's say at the level of the termination and if this is uh, activated then it will inhibit the uh, motor neurons of the antagonistic muscles. So this will be the antagonistic skeletal muscle fiber. So if I want to play with this the most common uh, explained reflex is the patella reflex or quadriceps, quadriceps reflex. When we have the stretch of the quadriceps muscle, what is uh, provided by the gravity in each millisecond and my knee, for example, is standing to be flexed and uh, my body posture to be collapsed, I have to correct it in each millisecond and this is what uh, this reflex uh, does in this case. So, we have a detection of the stretch with the intrafusal fibers because it, it is parallel running with the extrafusal. We have the uh, stimulus uh, into the center and the response is the, reflect, uh, the contraction of the same muscle with the extrafusal fibers. So this is, in case of the quadriceps, uh, would be at the level of L4, L3 in the uh, spinal cord because the a quadriceps is innervated by the uh, femoral nerve from the lumbar plexus. But if you regard this uh, lower extremity, the antagonistic muscles are the hamstring muscles, the flexors of the knee. We have to antagonize them and this is what this collateral does. We have to descend a few segments because the hamstring muscles are already innervated by the skeletic plexus, so a few segments below. And that's why we have to send the input uh, to the uh, lower segments where we have to insert an inhibitory uh, interneuron and this will inhibit the uh, large motor neurons uh, uh, running to the antagonistic muscles. So the same thing. It's not part of the reflex but it's an additional well, process. The reflex along with the five components is only this. Uh, so this is one thing. Now in neurology we can uh, test this way the dis different segments. Not only L3, L4 uh, are used for the quadriceps. We have other very uh, uh, famous, let's say, uh, reflexes, proprioceptive reflexes. For example, the biceps reflex, when you hit the tendon of the biceps, this is typical for C5 segment. We have the triceps reflex behind, that is C7. And then we have 
or the uh, quadriceps at L3, L4, and we have Achilles reflex also uh, at uh, S1. And uh, <coughs> in case of the biceps, for example, if we follow this figure, if I hit the biceps tendon, this response, uh, risk will respond with uh, contraction, but we have to inhibit the antagonistic muscle, the triceps, with this way. But if we hit the triceps, then uh, it is lower and it is at a lower segment, so this reflex works again. But then we have to send ascending collateral a few segments above. Muscle spindle, the thicker again with annulospiral nerve endings from nuclear bag receptor, and this is for the speed of the stretch. And the other option is the nuclear chain, which uses a bit thinner fiber. This is uh, from the flower spray uh, nerve ending, and this is for the, the degree of the stretch. And this muscle group will be the antagonist muscle. So this can be uh, either lower or upper than the uh, reflex arch. The other topic what I want to add is the fine-tuning of the uh, uh, sensitivity of the muscle spindle, which is regulated by uh, thinner uh, nerve fibers through the intrafusal fiber contraction. And these nerve cells are located also in the ventral horn with a bit smaller cell body. And these axons run to the intrafusal fibers, but these are the A gamma type uh, nerve fibers. So that's why we used to say that in the uh, ventral lateral and ventral medial horn, where we have the somatomotor neurons, it can be either A alpha or A gamma uh, neurons and fibers. And what regulates the A gamma fibers? Uh, from above, we have descending uh, pathways, what we study very soon, and they terminate on the ego motor neurons. So these are the descending pathways. Among these, the most famous for setting the ego motor neurons, and this way, the muscle tone, is the reticulospinal tract. Let me, let me put it here. Reticular spinal tract. This will be the most famous and the most important for the muscle tone regulation. So, why do we call this gamma loop? Because this is uh, uh, this shows this. Uh, if we have a descending uh, pathway, it terminates on the A gamma motor neurons, which run to the intrafusal fibers. Uh, which is sensitive to stretch. In this case, we go to the center from where we have the large motor neuron to the extra fusal fiber. And this shape is a gamma light, so this is the gamma loop if we include these four uh, components. Uh, so this is active against anti gravitation. And also, when we evoke this with a reflex hammer, uh, we will study this in neurology. Uh, the other thing what I want to add, and you will see later uh, the uh, options, uh, would be the collaterals of the green fiber. This is from the proprioceptors, and it, it is involved in this reflex, plus it sends collateral downward or upward, depending where we are. Uh, but we have two other options, and this is what I want to tell you, because uh, usually it's not uh, shown in the textbooks in the same figure. This uh, incoming central process gives collateral in this zone and ascends ipsilaterally in the dorsal column, and uh, together with the other epicritic uh, fibers, it uh, goes to the uh, cuneate and gracile nuclei, in the uh, medulla oblongata, then thalamus, and then up to the cortex. These will be the so-called conscious proprioceptive input to the cortex. And we have another option, which comes in 
and goes to this region where we have the Clark nucleus uh, between C8 and L3 and from here we have another other pathway uh, which uh, goes directly ipsilaterally to the cerebellum and this will be for the unconscious uh, proprioceptive input. So this is quite complicated. I mentioned four options for the incoming central process. The uh, major is the reflex itself, then inhibition of the antagonistic muscles, and at the same time we have to send input uh, to the cerebellum. This is the unconscious, this will be later the posterior dorsal spinal cerebellar tract, or conscious uh, proprioceptive input up to the uh, cortex uh, together with the other epicritic fibers in the dorsal column, the medial lambiscus system. Uh, from clinical aspect, we have two important things here. One is the uh, specific segment, uh, which uh, includes uh, a stretch reflex, because this is also called stretch reflex, I didn't forget to mention. Uh, and uh, as I told you, C5 for biceps, C7 for triceps, L3, L4 for the quadriceps and S1 for the Achilles. These are the most uh, typical. We have something similar on the head as masseter reflex. We will return to this later. Uh, and the other thing is that the neurologist with the testing the reflexes uh, are able to get input and info about the level of the lesion. Because if we have a weakening, a weakened uh, reflex, hypoactive uh, reflex uh, re related to flexid uh, paralysis. This is typical for the lesion in one component of the reflex arch. So in this case, uh, the uh, joint will be more flexid and easily uh, flexible. But if we have lesion somewhere above uh, related to the descending pathways, the reflex becomes hyperactivated, hyperreflexia uh, is the phenomenon, and uh, it is associated with acid paralysis. The doctor is uh, not able to flex easily the, uh, the given uh, joint. So this can be diagnostic for the neurologist later in the uh, clinical practice. Uh, I'd like to add something to the proprioceptive reflex arch and this topic. Namely, that why do we need to use the gamma loop and the uh, gamma motor neuron to innervate the intrafusal fibers? Because this is how we are able to set the sensitivity at the length of the intrafusal fiber to be able to uh, be sensitive uh, in each phase or position of the joint. So even when we are skiing, uh, not only in straightened position, uh, the intrafusal fibers will be sensitive to stretch, so that's why we don't collapse, for example, in this position. So, with the gamma neuron, we are able to set the sensitivity of, of the intrafusal fiber, and then if we have the stretch of the whole muscle, then uh, uh, we have uh, the response, and that's why we can correct it to the uh, proper position. Okay, so in case of the uh, stretch reflex or proprioceptive reflex, when we have the stretch of one of the muscles and uh, it, responds, it responds with uh, the contraction of the same uh, muscle, then we have to inhibit the antagonistic muscles uh, with the insertion of an inhibitory interneuron. I made an example for this previously, but what happens when we have to contract simultaneously the two uh, groups which otherwise uh, uh, serve as antagonists. Uh, we have a special theory for this. This is what I want to explain. Uh, if this is the distal part of the humerus and uh, the olecranon with ulna around from a lateral aspect, we have two muscle groups. In front we have uh, uh, the flexors. Among these, the brachialis will be attached to the ulna and posteriorly we have the triceps in the same way. So they 
uh, act otherwise antagonistically uh, on each other. So when we have the stretch reflex uh, in the brachialis muscle, then triceps uh, will be relaxed and uh, should be inhibited, not to contract, and vice versa. And uh, when we want to activate simultaneously the two groups, when we want to hold something heavy and we have to stabilize the elbow in this case, uh, or when we want to lift up something to set the proper muscle tone into, then we may need to activate simultaneously the, the, the two muscle groups. So, if I put here the uh, motor neurons which innervate one and the other muscle, this is the activation. And uh, above we have a so called premotor. Mm-hmm. 